Hello everyone, I'm Food for Dogs and today it's Operation Day. Uh, what kind of operation? Well, um, Pius Vita operation. Um, two games by Experience Inc. Uh, the company that brought us Demon Gaze and is well known for their dungeon crawlers. And as you all know, I do love my dungeon crawlers. Uh, now, I've never talked about these two games before because nobody talks much about them. Um, they didn't receive terribly bad reviews, but neither did they receive very good reviews. So they're sort of piddling about in that middle area where uh, people easily overlook games or forget about them. I thought we'd have a quick look at the limited editions today because as luck would have it, I have them both. Um, slightly unusual situation. I bought the um, limited edition for the second game first. So the second game in this Operation series, Operation Babel, um, was released in 20, May 2017. And I bought mine from Nisa Nipponichi Software in Europe. The price, I think, for these limited editions has never changed very much. They've always been around uh, 45 uh, pounds, British pounds. I remember I bought it at the time because I had played the first game, Operation Abyss. Um, I've got, got it here. It's a bit reflective, the cellophane. I bought that game digitally many years ago. In fact, I had a quick look um, through my notes and I bought it in March 2016 on the PlayStation Network for the princely sum of 21 New Zealand dollars, which is about 12 US dollars or 11 euros. As you can see from that, um, we used to have brilliant sales and discounts years ago on the Vita store. Uh, many of the big mainstream games, the medium-sized dungeon crawlers, well-known uh, company names, were often discounted a lot and uh, I picked up most of my games that way to play digitally certainly in the first few years so I played it digitally on my Vita uh, for quite some time and here you see the loading screen let me see if I can get it to come up the game features what I would call crystal clear graphics. They're very, very nice. And the text, while it is rather on the small side, is so crisp and clear that I don't have problems reading it either. Operation Abyss, the first game, uh, came out in Japan in July 2014. And in Europe and North America in June 2015. And in North America, it was rated M for mature. Uh, and you can see in Europe, it was rated uh, age rated 16. Um, so yeah, 16, 17 age group rating in the West. Now, I, as you can see, I've never opened this physical copy. I bought it as a backup because I was aware I only had the digital and I thought, well, better get a physical. So at some point I bought that in a sale just to have it as a backup. Then last year, I saw that the stock for this particular limited edition was getting very, very low at Nisa Europe. And I had enjoyed this limited edition so much 
that I thought, well, it would be a shame, wouldn't it? Um, I'd rather make sure I have it. So I, I did order it um, last year. But as you can see, I've never unboxed it. It still has the um, cellophane wrapping on it. So that's what we're going to do today. Um, first of all, though, I'll introduce you to the goodies in this edition um, because this is a really, really nice limited edition. You, you will see it's, um, it's amazing what they packed into this uh, slim uh, cardboard case. I'll just show you how well they packaged things inside. Um, they have this sort of clear plastic arrangement uh, where the art book goes at the bottom and then the other things on top and everything is held in place securely. Um, it's a very good design. Soundtrack. You can, I hope you can hear it in the background. I have put it on. Yes, it's got some nice illustrations inside. In fact, the illustrations throughout are very good. And there's a lot of soundtracks on here. I think they do uh, 60 minutes, so um, it's a it's a nice um, OST. Um, once again, Experience is a company I have found they always provide good, solid soundtracks for their games. Um, for some reason I'm absolutely not sure about, I ended up with an American and North American version of Operation Babel, uh, but the version that came with my limited edition is of course the um, the one for Region 4, so that's that's my region, Oceania. And you're asking, what well, what is this? This is called a clear file and it has rather nice illustration on it. Um, so we've covered all that. It also comes with a poster. And I think that must have been the main reason why I bought this, because I do love my posters. So I've done a very, very quick tour in my gaming room, and I've, I've taken a short video clip because the poster is up on the wall there, and I will show you that right now. So this is the um, poster for Operation... Babel, or I often say Babel, uh, whatever you prefer. And that is on my gaming room wall. And I'll just pan around the top of the bookcase or two uh, figurines that uh, I didn't have space for in the lounge. And here are some more posters. and figurines and a little charging station I have for my Vitas down there and there we are my little retreat my haven This is a very beautiful poster. Uh, Poodle Pie had it laminated for me. So um, that was my gaming room with the poster on the wall. Uh, and finally, we have a look at the art book. Look at that. It's, it's soft cover, but, uh, but it's heavy. It's well produced. I'll just have a look. I don't know how many pages. 112 pages. Uh, it's called a visual fan book and that is a very good description because there is just a huge amount of information in here. You know, there's a, a story introduction with timeline, uh, which is, you know, great if you love background reading to your games. Um, this is the sort of thing I just lap up. 
and I'll show you a few of the illustrations. Here are the character diagrams. And some more um, detail you see here. Another character. As you can see, this is a really, really high quality print production. This will give you an idea of some of the enemies. They really put a lot of work into the design. Portraits, main character. Portrait. And I think I'll leave it at that. They do say there are spoilers in this book, so I won't go any further. Okay. As you can see, I really like the limited edition. I think it's really um, beautifully produced. Well worth it. But the game I've played the most is the first one, Operation Abyss. And I literally can't remember what is in, the, um, in this limited edition. And we will dig into the cellophane. Okay, that wasn't too difficult. So I assume the box will open up the same way as um, this one. And I'll just quickly give you a background on Operation Abyss. Um, as I mentioned, it came out in 2015 here in the West. Ooh. Here we have the game and this time it will be I just need to check the back. I think it will be the export edition, which is region four, as you can see. So different from this one, which is region two, Europe, and region four being Oceania. Okay. And it comes with a similar style of soundtrack. It sort of matches the one from the second game, which is nice. I do like consistency within a series, so that's important to me. So I expect this will be a very nice soundtrack as well. Now, um, Operation Abyss, um, you might be wondering well, what is the game about, and I'll just quickly um, do the text that Anissa supplied. Um, from the studio that made Demon Gaze comes Operation Abyss, New Tokyo Legacy is the subtitle, a sci-fi dungeon crawler RPG set in a near future Tokyo. With a city under the constant threat of variants, uh, genetically engineered monsters that is, and the emergence of portals leading to a mysterious dimension called the Abyss, the government has established the Code Physics Agency to investigate these mysterious phenomena. The Zith Squad, that is really difficult to pronounce, a unique group of teens uh, who have been modified by some kind of technology, must evade traps, face down powerful monsters and investigate the mystery behind the abyss. Well, of course they have to. Um, so that's the story behind the game. This is the mechanism. It's such a clever design, you know. It's it's not. They haven't used a lot of material, but it means the whole thing is very secure. And as I know from experience, it's really difficult getting the art book out. There we are. I'll take the whole thing out. That's easier. Here we are. 
And this is the art book that comes with it. And it looks like another bumper edition, beautifully produced. And I'm, of course, always thrilled to have an art book. Uh, I do regret not having a poster, but I'm going to shut up about that now. <laughs> having a nice art book and a good original soundtrack, uh, those are for me the cornerstones of a good limited edition. So let's have a look inside. And first up is the main character whom I recognise and know well, uh, Alice Mifune. She's really cute. Um, and uh, she's just a delightful party member. There's also a bit of underwear, which I'm not going to show you. And here is uh, one character in traditional garb. And of course, that's always a great opportunity for costume design. Male characters, I'm trying to be balanced here. Johnny. And I'll just have a quick look if we... Uh, they, they've got all the different classes uh, beautifully illustrated, you know, like the samurai. The game provides a lot of um, what I would call fine-grained party development. And that's something I always like in RPGs. That's something that the experienced RPGs tend to do, uh, which is why I like practically all of them. There's something called um, blood codes that's used in, in the two um, games. And that's a bit difficult to explain without explaining the whole game, but uh, it's part of your character uh, stats and development using a blood code. A bit like, I suppose, if you're familiar with the more recent code vein that also uses um, blood codes, I think. Um, yeah, just, just beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So, this was the belated unboxing, indeed a very, very late unboxing, for Operation Abyss, New Tokyo Legacy, about five years after publication. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, if you're thinking of getting the game, if you like dungeon crawlers and uh, are in need of one at the moment, I have to say very briefly that both of these games, while they are solidly made and perfectly competent dungeon crawlers, they are not in the same league as the top dungeon crawlers we have on the Vita. We have been spoilt on the Vita with really top-notch, excellent JRPGs and dungeon crawlers. Uh, so uh, games that fall into more into the middle ground have a hard time, um, but there's no reason not to play them because uh, they are perfectly good games and I sometimes feel like that's just what I want, you know. Um, if you want to do a bit of dungeon crawling and don't have any other one available, this is not a bad choice at all. And finally, the amazing news is that I just had a look today on the website for Nisa Europe and this particular edition is actually still available, which is really surprising. It's several years old uh, and as you've seen, it really is a very nice limited edition. So who knows? you might be tempted. I hope that's given you a bit of an insight into a, a dungeon crawler RPG that 
not many people talk about these days. Um, hope you found it interesting. Thank you very much for watching. Keep well. I'm Fruit for Dogs. Bye bye.